today's Namaste Yoga is our 100th episode. We are continuing our series on yoga for the emotions and today's emotion is joy. Hello, welcome to episode okay, so two. Here's our blanket, excellent. Asymmetrical two. Dropping and sinking. Uh, uh, notice how the... So just notice. Joining us for the second episode next week. Namaste. Hello and welcome to episode 100 of Namaste Yoga. I'm so excited that you could join us for our celebration today. We brought Ninka on to celebrate with us today. I know so many of you on Facebook were so excited that she was coming, so here she is. <laughs> and um, it's good because I, people will say that I laugh more when you're here. <laughs> See, already. So um, today's episode is dedicated to, I knew I was going to cry, to you. This is like a wedding, <laughs> our viewers. Um, all of you made this class, so thank you. We've had not one, but five, five or six, there's one now, eagles going overhead so this feels really like um really special today so this whole class is for you and for being with us for 100 episodes so thank you okay we gotta calm down <laughs> last week was sad <laughs> okay so go ahead and lie down um, we're starting today with um, the Pran Mudra, and this is from Floriana Rodino. She's from one of our viewers from Italy, and she has been really beautifully reminding me of the importance of doing mudras in our practice. So, this mudra practice is thumb and ring and baby fingers together. So it might get uh, you to show them that. It's really simple as the prawn mudra. And you're just going to lie with that, yeah, on the ground. So your hands on the ground. Yeah. So thumb, ring, baby finger. Okay, so this mudra is the one that Floriana from Italy um, asked for us to include. The prawn mudra. It's supposed to... It's very revitalizing for your body and soul. And so I'm going to tie it into today's theme in a moment, but it'll start to make sense. Um, this episode is, is dedicated to joy. So of course my tears are tears of joy. Um, joy, Sanskrit, uh, the translation for joy in Sanskrit um, as this emotion that we're working with this week is Aladini Shakti. And this joy is a joy, a pure joy that comes from within. And it's not based on anything that happens in your external environment. It's something that bubbles up, wells up from within. And it really help, happens when we feel that God or life is good. And so this mudra, this prawn mudra, is supposed to help improve your vision. And I think this helps us improve our vision to see that life is good. To open our eyes and see the goodness in life and the joy in life. So one of the favorite uh, subjects of joy is humor and humor in the form of laughing at Maya or this illusion of the world that we live in. So if we take it too seriously, it can get us down. But if we can laugh and know that things are temporary and always changing and everything is an illusion, then we will have much more joy in life. And joy teaches us the futility of attaching too much importance to any one thing. So I have some jokes today, <laughs> some yoga jokes. Um, this one is, um, if somebody was to ask me what gift I would want for Namaste Yoga's 100th uh, episode, I would say, no gifts, only presents, please. <laughs> They're groaners, right? <laughs> so humor helps to take the seriousness out of life the element associated with joy is fire 
so it's a rajasic emotion it's it's one that fires us up so it can burn us out too we need to balance it as well pitta people laugh really easily did you see that laughter there <laughs> they, you know and pitta people really have to laugh easily because if their anger gets to the better of them they have to stop and laugh at themselves and think oh my gosh i'm having a temper tantrum i can't believe it this is silliness look at what i'm doing Laughter increases our endorphins and our serotonin, and it lowers our dopamine, norepinephrine, and cortisol. So, seeing the beauty in life. The other thing here is that for children and teenagers, laughter comes really easily, partly because um, as adults we're socially conditioned to contain ourselves more, but also partly because our chemistry changes. So we dry up more as we age. When, as we're younger, we're, we have more fire, we're more jovial. So knowing that um, today is our 100th episode and that we're going to be practicing joy and celebrating our 100th episode and gratitude for all of you who have been with us um, from the beginning and those of you who are just joining us, um, we appreciate you so much and I just appreciate this class that you have put together for us today to express our joy. And I want to thank uh, Elisa Richmond because she came up with a theme for this class. Okay, so state your intention to yourself internally. What is it that you'd like to receive from your practice today? What is it that you would like to receive from working with joy? And then you can start to wiggle and stretch out. So um, when you get people to give requests for poses, <laughs> they're like all main event poses. <laughs> so this little bit is going to get you ready for all these main event poses that you all have requested. So let's bend your knees, place your feet flat on the floor. Cross your right leg over your left leg and really open your right knee out to the side. Draw your left leg in. So just opening up your hips. Feeling the back of your pelvis heavy on the ground. Letting your shoulders be heavy. Lengthen the back of your neck, space between your teeth. And then release your left leg. We'll switch legs. You can cross your left leg over your right leg. Really open your left knee out to the side. Draw your right knee in. and then release and we're going to roll over onto our stomachs so Ninka you and I are going to face our heads the other way so roll over onto your stomach and one of the requests for the class was for dancer pose so we'll just get our quads ready for that uh, wiggle your hips from side to side so your low back is nice and released and long press the front of your pelvis into the ground and, and bend your right knee Reach around and hold on to your right ankle and draw your right heel towards your buttocks. Feel the opening in the, uh, you want to feel a stretch in the front of your leg. You can think about really opening here in this space at the front of your hip flexor. You can use a strap here too.
Okay, and then release. And let's do that on the other side. So bend your left leg in, reach around and hold on. Draw your left heel towards your buttocks. Feel an op a stretch in the front of your left leg. Okay, release your left leg. You're gonna come up and back into child's pose. Just stretch out your low back a little bit. Child's pose. And you're going to turn sideways on your mat. So this is not a request. <laughs> Actually, this is like the least requested yoga pose ever, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, frog pose. So you're going to come up onto all fours and you're going to open your knees out to the side with your toes pointing forward. Oh man, this one, this one isn't getting easier. Okay, keep your tail tucked under. So tendency is people will lean forward and lift their tail. Keep your tail tucked under and lean back and breathe. I promise after this we're getting to the fun stuff. This is the last of preparing. But frog pose is really, it's almost so ridiculous you have to laugh at yourself in it. And if you do it in class, everybody's lined up looking at each other's butt, right? It kind of brings a humility and silliness to life, this pose, right? <laughs> It's hard to be serious in frog pose. My hips think they're serious though. Okay, come on up. That's enough of that. Yeah, this is a good way of coming out, leaning forward. There's an eagle again. I don't know what's going on down here today. They decided to join us for Namaste 100. Okay, this is also a request from Floriana Rodina, one of my favorite series too, the Spinal Energy Series. We have a lot of requested poses to cover today, so we're going to shorten this a lot. You can always do this sitting on a chair or kneeling in cat pose too are, are good options for this. So this starts with your hands on your ankles. You hold on to your ankles and you inhale, tip your pelvis forward, exhale, round your pelvis back. So just hold on to your ankles, that's it. Okay, inhale, come to the center. Exhale. Place your hands on your knees. And we're going to circle. This one is scrape the peanut butter jar. So inhale, circle your navel around in front and exhale, circle around behind.
Okay, go the other way. And then come back center, take a deep breath in and exhale. Okay, take your hands and place them on your shoulders. You can do this one standing too. You could do it sitting on a chair as well. If you were sitting, you need to sit on the edge of it. But you're going to inhale to your left, exhale to your right. And inhale in the center and exhale okay so we're moving up our spine we're drawing that energy up and it does feel very much like joy this kind of fire moving up and out of your body moving up to your heart center you place your hands on your knees and here your arms are supposed to be straight in this one so you exhale you round your heart center back and inhale open your heart forward Choose a speed that works for you. And then inhale, come center, and exhale. The next piece is you inhale, you bring your shoulders up, and you exhale and you drop them down. So you do this quite quickly. Um, this might not feel good in your body, depending on your necks and your shoulders. So you can always inhale up and exhale, roll back and down instead. So do what works best in your body. You could do this one standing again too. Inhale up, exhale down. Great, so now you're going to circle your head around in front five times one way. And five times the other way. Okay, so that is the Spinal Energy Series. Thank you, Floriano, for that one. One of my favorites as well. Our next yoga posture comes from Kelly Howard. It's called Wild Thing Pose. And I was, this request came in and I said, I would love to do Wild Thing Pose. What's Wild Thing Pose? So we learned about Wild Thing Pose. This, and then there was this big, long discussion on Facebook about Wild Thing Pose. We're gonna do a modified version first, but 
try the other one too because it's not that hard. It, it looks harder than it is. That's what Kelly said and I have to agree with her. So here's the modified version. You're gonna start on all fours. Take your right leg behind you. Open your right hip. Lift your right arm up and open up. So you're back bending here, reaching your right arm back. Half circle, yeah. Okay, so come on back. And we'll do this on the other side. So we're gonna turn our directions, Ninka. So we're gonna turn the other way. Oh. <laughs> we're gonna take your left leg. See, this is what happens, you get two pittas, like, bossing each other around. <laughs> left leg, left leg, open your left arm, open up. Okay, come on back. It's a great pose. I, I love it. It will become, get used to wild thing. It'll, it'll definitely be in the class. Okay, let me show you. There's a couple of different ways you can come into a more full expression of this. And I, I encourage you to try it. Here's the way that I, when I actually saw this pose, I was, I was like, you know what? I do actually recognize that. I, I, this is how we did it at Esther Myers. You're going to reach your sit bones up towards the ceiling. And then you're going to take your left leg behind you up and behind open your left hip and keep going until your left foot comes on the ground you open your left arm oh. and really if we had a lot of money we would cue the wild thing music here but that tends to cost a lot on, on yeah I don't think we can even sing it <laughs> Come back. And open your right leg up and over. Open your. Oh. <laughs> okay. oh, this one's harder. Yeah, me too. Okay, let's take a little. Oh, my, yeah, down dog after or child's pose. My sacrum feels like it needs a nice child's pose. I'm going to show you another way to do that pose because this was interesting when I taught it in class night last night some people did the down dog flip really easily and then other people did the second way a lot more easily same same pose so just different ways of accessing it in your body okay so come on up we're gonna do a side plank let's start we'll start on our right arms you can start on your how did the I think you just reach, reach up and over that way. <laughs> it is a lot of uh, weight bearing in your upper body. Okay, let's try it the other way. Plank pose the other way. And then you step over. Okay, <laughs> good enough. That was a lot of wild thing. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> hey, wild thing pose. All right, let's do. Let's do uh, something that Rondell Parker requested, which was lion's breath. We can kind of uh, release all our wildness here. Okay, so take a deep breath in. Exhale, stick out your tongue. Turn your eyes up. Let's do that two more times. Okay. All right, so this next pose, God bless you. Ivy Tulin requested this pose. I was like, this is going to be the first class that doesn't have pigeon in it for this whole Yoga for Emotions series. And then she requested and I was like, yes, there we go. <laughs> there it is. So let's do pigeon. Come into down dog. And take your right leg up. Maybe give it a little shake out. 
taking your right leg forward. And we're not gonna do forward folding pigeon today. We're gonna keep this joyful and upright today. There goes the eagle again. Okay, so nice upright pigeon. And tuck your left toes under at the back. Lift your left knee to get some opening in the front of your left hip. So you can stay here or you can bend your back leg and hold on to your left foot. Okay, and then release. We'll step back into downward facing dog. Bring your left leg up, your left knee forward for back bending pigeon. Did you do the opposite side? <laughs> Did you do that last time? Your other left. <laughs> it all works out right I probably just messed up her karma there she's probably supposed to do that side twice <laughs> okay tuck your right toe under lift your right knee open up the front of your right hip so this you can stay with this here nice opener for the front of your left hip or you can bend your back right leg reach around and hold on Okay, release and step back down dog. Oh yeah, nobody requested down dog either. <laughs> it's kind of a given, right? You just know it's gonna happen. <laughs> step your feet in and come up to standing. So this was so curious and funny and humorous to me. Namaste Yoga is pretty big in Italy, which is pretty hilarious to me too because I don't speak Italian, I speak English in these, but there's a lot of English speaking Italians that watch this show. And here's the even funnier thing is that all three of them that requested poses requested tree pose. <laughs> So thank you, Floriana, Viola, and Linda for um, requesting tree pose. And one of them said, I said, why are all the Italian viewers requesting tree pose? And one of them said, it's because we Italians really need to be grounded. So tree pose for our Italian viewers. Turn your left toes out to the side. Pick up your left foot. You can place it either on the inside of your calf or the inside of your thigh. Bring your hands to your heart center. And you can leave them there or you can take them overhead. Okay, release tree pose from your body. That felt really good, right? Right before we filmed this, I did Ninka's class, which was all about tree pose today. So we have an unfair advantage, I'm afraid. Stand on your left foot, turn your right toes out. Pick up your right foot either above or below your knee. Bring your hands to your heart center. And maybe take your hands up and overhead.
Okay, and then release this pose from your body. So of course, a class on joy would not be complete without Breath of Joy. And I want to thank Rondell Parker for um, requesting this uh, practice, this breath. So the way it works is you inhale, you bring your hands in front a little bit, inhale out to the side, inhale overhead, exhale, bend your knees and fold forward. So front, side, overhead, exhale. Okay, decide whether you want to finish up or down. When you come up, come up slowly. Okay, so at this point in the class, you guys are probably feeling that heat, that fire building inside of you. It's really chilly where we are outside, so I'm not really feeling it. But I can feel that, you feel that internal flame starting to burn a little bit more, for sure. Okay, this one is from Roxanne Lee. She requested dancer pose, not a Ranjasana. Oh, from Roxanne Lisa, not a Ranjasana dancer pose. Okay, so lots of balancing postures. <laughs> Stand on your right leg, bend your left knee, reach around and hold onto your left foot or your left ankle. Spend a few breaths here, lining up both of your legs. So extend your left arm up and you're going to roll your right, sorry, right arm up, left shoulder back and down. You're going to pull your heel away from your buttocks to this action of pulling your arm away will start to, I'll just lower my arm, uh, pull your chest back. So it's a standing balancing back bend. No biggie. <laughs> Okay, and then release. We'll do this on the other side. So, actually, yeah, the other side. Stand on your left foot, bend your right knee. Line up both your legs, tuck your tail under, open up the front of your hip. You're gonna extend your left arm up and then start to move your right heel away from your buttocks. That action will pull your chest back, open your heart center. Okay, release your this pose from your body and let's do a forward fold after that back bending take your feet wide hinge forward through your hips wide-legged standing forward fold Okay, and then come on back up. And all this practice so far has been very um, fiery, invigorating, bringing that joy up. And we need to balance that with some more calming and cooling postures. So we're going to do some legs up the wall. So we'll have to stop and change and move to a tree or something.
So legs up the wall. Ninka's doing legs up a tree. Fantastic. Thank you, Elisa Richmond, for this pose. I wanted to use this time to look back on our 100 episodes and all the things that we have done over the last two years. We began Namaste Yoga with the Phoenix Rising Yoga Therapy style classes and I was so inspired by Michael Lee's book Turn Stress into Bliss and, and from studying with Phoenix Rising Yoga Therapy that we took some of the themes from his book and we did some classes to begin our series. One of our most popular classes on Namaste Yoga is this, it's episode 15 in case you're wondering. <laughs> Um, most of our shows have around three to 4,000 views. Sleep Yoga has well over 10,000 views on it, so very popular. At the beginning of the series, we did a lot of classes around the season. So uh, we began in the fall, we did some fall classes, we did some winter classes. Then into the a Hindu deity series, which was really fun. We worked a lot with Kali then, but Ganesh, uh, Shiva. We worked with a lot of the different Hindu deities. We did a series of classes on the Yamas and the Niyamas from the Yoga Sutras. We did a series of classes introducing you to Ayurveda and the three different doshas. And we did a whole series uh, called Listening with Your Whole Body, where we looked at our bodies as more than just our physical bodies, but our thought bodies, our emotional bodies, our spirit bodies, and we learn how to listen to all parts of our bodies. We did a series on our organs, a whole uh, series of classes dedicated to different organs. We did a series on chakras and their archetypes. Uh, number 72 is still my favorite episode uh, and I think the most meaningful class I've ever taught in my entire yoga career. It was the class on Sankalpa and that was couched within a series that we called Yoga Jargon. We, did, we pulled out terms from the Yoga Sutras like Karma and Dharma, um, Sankalpa, Drishti. We used a whole bunch of, pulled out a bunch of different things, words that you might hear in yoga class and really demystified them in that series. But episode 72 is, I think, one of the best classes I've ever taught. And for me, is the true purpose and meaning behind yoga, our, our intention. 71 is another very popular one. It was our restorative class. Again, this one has around the same number of views as the sleep yoga class. So I think people want more of that stuff. Um, okay, we did a series through at the at, through the spring and the beginning of the summer on yoga stories, where we took one each pose and we looked at the stories behind them, the mythology, the Hindu mythology behind each one. In the summer, we did a series of classes on the five values, uh, where we looked at the flow of energy in our bodies, and that was really great. And now we're doing a series on the emotions, and I have to say, um, this is I'm greatly blessed uh, by Shakti's creative energy and I don't think there's any shortage of ideas to come in the future. Um, I've got a few different series in queue waiting to go. <laughs> back on our, let's look back on our two years, uh, what we've been up to. I'm going to get you to bend your knees now, roll to your side. And we're going to finish with a seated breath practice that Karen Holden uh, recommended, which is alternate nostril breathing. So maybe you can remember, because I feel like this was at the yoga festival in Toronto that we learned this. Yeah, the, whoever taught this said, now there's all these complicated mudras for alternate nostril breathing, but I like just going like this. Do you remember who that was? No, I, I can't remember where or who it was. We're going to do it this way because I think it's kind of fun and... Uh, it goes with my joy theme. It's not too serious like a, a mudra. There's all different mudras for these. So the way it works is you're going to close your right nostril with your right finger. Breathe in through your left nostril. Close your left nostril with your left finger. Breathe out through your right nostril. Breathe in through your right nostril. Close right, breathe out left. Breathe in left. 
Close left, breathe out right. Breathe in right. Close right, breathe out left. Breathe in left. Close left, breathe out right. Breathe in right. Close right, breathe out left. So keep going with this on your own, in your own breath rhythm. This is a gentle breath, calming breath. Finish by breathing out through your left nostril. It's a very sweet breath. It's, it makes me think of Shambhavi Chopra because she talks about the sweetness of the nectar of, the, of life of Soma. And when we spend a whole class building up that fire, that fire of joy, then um, it's good to create a container for it. So we draw that Soma, that sweet nectar of life down and in and it creates space for it and it holds that energy rather than it flying all over the place. So that wraps up our 100th episode. Um, I want to thank all of you who contributed by requesting poses for the class and I want to take this time, I'm going to try and cry gracefully this time, I want to take this time to thank Tim West who has been behind the camera for each episode um, 100 what I do takes an hour to come and sit and teach for you what he does takes hours the stuff that he does beforehand all the stuff that he does after to make it be able to shoot up onto the internet and go out to all these places where you can all take advantage of we're just so grateful to him and for the hours of work that he puts into this each week so thank you Tim and thank you to all of you for supporting us here at Namaste Yoga. And here's to 100 more. <laughs> Namaste. Hello, this is Ivy Tulin from Warwick, New York, sending a big congratulations to Namaste Yoga on 100 hours of making the world a safer, and more peaceful and better place for all of us. Namaste.